Good afternoon everybody, this is the Bearded Tangent, and today we're going to be talking about sinusoidal functions. So it's a very strange word, what it essentially means is we are looking at sine and cosine functions and using them to model real world data. This can go for anything from weather, temperature, rainfall, tides, predator-prey relationships, blood pressure, um, breathing rhythms, uh, just a, a wide variety of different topics that we can cover using sinusoidal functions. Today we're going to look at temperature and so uh, on the board right now I have the average temperature for the city of Honolulu, Hawaii um, from January to December written out and so looking at this data set uh, we're going to be able to write a function for the excuse me, write an equation for the function, uh, whichever it is, sine or cosine, which we'll figure out in a moment, and then um, plug some values in and see what we get from our model. All right, so let's take a look at what we can do. So the first thing we're gonna need to figure out is we're gonna have some things we need to find. For instance, the amplitude of our equation, uh, the vertical shift if there is one, the period, uh, and the phase shift. We need all of these before we can write an equation. So. Um, there's a new formula that we have that we can use. So the very first thing we'll do is we're going to find the amplitude. So finding the amplitude for part A. All right, so the formula for finding amplitude if you have a data set is A equals the max minus the min over two. So you're gonna take the maximum value in your data set, uh, subtract the minimum value in your data set, and then divide that by two. All right, so for Hawaii, our maximum value is going to be 81. So I'll plug that in, 81. Our minimum value is going to be 73. So I plug that in, and I'm gonna put that over two. So that's a difference of eight, and eight divided by two would give me four. So four is going to equal my amplitude. For the second part, we wanna know what the vertical shift is. So we want to find the vertical shift for our data. So it's a very similar formula. We actually use max and min. It's this time we just add them together and divide by two to get our vertical shift. So again, I'm going to use 81. And now I'll add 73 to that and then divide by two. So if you take 81 and add 73 to it, you get 154. And so if you divide that by two, you get a total of 77 for your vertical shift, which is D. All right, so now we want to find the period of our function. So let's make some room here. C ask us what is the period okay so we look at the data we've been presented with so this is going January through December now uh, this is just a typical year so uh, at the end of December of this year it would start over back at January and it would keep repeating um, for till the end of time so that means that we have a period of 12 months it's going to repeat every 12 months and this is true for most things dealing with weather or time, um, hours of daylight, stuff like that, rainfall. Uh, typically they're on a 12 month cycle, so your period would be 12 months for this. So, which means later on whenever we write the equation, we need to solve for B. All right? And remember the period equals two pi over B. So if I wanna solve for B in a little bit, I'll have 12 over one, equals 2 pi over b, I'll just cross multiply, which would give me 2 pi equals 12b, and so I'll divide both sides by 12, and so I'm gonna get d equals pi over six. So anytime you have something that is a period of one year, 12 months, uh, you're going to get pi over six as b uh, to plug into your equation whenever you're writing it. Okay, so we found the amplitude, we found the period, 
um, and B, we found the vertical shift. So now we need to know what type of graph it is before we continue. So is this going to be a sine graph? Is this going to be a cosine graph? Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative? We're not sure. So let's take a look at our data. Okay, so if I were to kind of plot these points, 73 would be down here, another 73, 74, slightly higher, 76, slightly higher, 78, 79, 81, 81, 81, 80, and 77 and then back down to 74. So obviously our graph is a little skewed, but if we were to take a look at this, this would look not unlike a negative cosine graph. So if I were to draw an axis through here, we'd have a graph that's starting at a minimum, moving up to its maximum, and then moving back down to a minimum. So it would make that a negative cosine graph whenever I go to write my equation for this function. So let's see what we have so far. All right, for step D, we want to write the equation of the function. So, so far I have y equals negative 4, because it was a negative cosine. 4 was our amplitude, and we had a negative cosine graph. Have pi over 6 t. We're using t in place of theta right now because we're dealing with a unit of time. Um, we don't know what our phase shift is, so we're just going to put c and then plus 77, which was our vertical shift. Okay, so looking at this, I have a, most of my equation filled in. Uh, really, all I'm lacking is c. And we also have the variables y and t, which is how we will find out um, what temperature it is on a given month. So currently I can't solve for c. There's three variables in the problem. Uh, that's just too much for us to work with. However, I do know that if I plugged in, let's say, 1, which would represent January, uh, that y would equal 73. So if I plug this in, now have no more variables and so excuse me I only have C as my variable uh, and I can solve for C so let's get started doing that so I would subtract 77 from both sides first which will leave me with negative 4 equals negative 4 cosine pi over 6 times 1 is just going to leave us with pi over 6 plus C okay so now I would divide both sides by negative 4 which is going to leave me with 1 equals the cosine of pi over 6 plus c. We can continue this over here. I would want to take the arc cosine of both sides to get rid of the cosine. So the arc cosine of each side. Okay, and so doing that cancels out my cosines here. The arc cosine of 1 is going to give me 0. So 0 now equals pi over 6 plus c. And so again I just subtract both sides pi over 6. Cancel it out here. And so I'm going to be left with c equals negative pi over 6 or negative 0.52 if I wanted to write it out in decimal form. Either way would be acceptable. So now that we have C, we could plug it into our equation up here. Now, a common mistake is um, a lot of times when we have C, or excuse me, when we are given a phase shift, uh, C is the opposite sign of our phase shift. So for instance, if our phase shift was negative pi over 6, then C would be a positive value. However, this equals C, so whenever I plug it in, I want to leave it as whatever sign it is, negative or positive. So let's get rid of our work here so that we can now look at our completed equation. So now I have my completed equation. Y equals negative 4 cosine pi over 6 t um, minus 0 0.52 plus 77. So from here, um, we could use this equation to solve for 
any month we wanted to. So we could look and say, hey, what's this going to tell us that the temperature in August is in Hawaii, Honolulu? Or what's the temperature in May? Now it's important to point out that what we've written here is just a model. Okay, so this isn't going to be exact. It's going to predict. Uh, it's kind of like if you had a scatter plot of data that was following a trend and we drew a line through that data, we're not going to hit every single point. However, we're going to be around that. So one year, the weather might be up to 79 in May, or it might be up to 81 in May, or it might be lower down in the 75 in May, or something like that. So it's not going to be exact every time. However, it should be pretty accurate uh, on any given year. So if we wanted to plug in the final temperature in August, I would need to plug in a value for T. So since August is the eighth month of the year, we would simply plug in eight into my equation. And then we could use that to solve for the temperature in August. So if I punch this in, we get negative four cosine pi over six times eight minus 0.52 plus 77 we get 80.4 degrees 80.4 80.5 or so okay so if we want to look and see how well our model compared with the actual temperature in August we would see that our model is pretty accurate. Our model predicts that we'll have a temperature of 80.4 degrees, and we actually had a temperature of 81 degrees in August. And we could do the same thing with May. Uh, May, of course, is the fifth month of the year, so T would equal five in this equation, so you would plug five in. So I could enter this into my calculator as well. And if I enter it in, I would get that in May, the temperature predicted by our model would be 79.01. So if we went and looked at May, we see that it is 78 degrees in Honolulu, and our model predicted that it was going to be 79.01. So again, very close, uh, about a degree off from what the actual temperature was. So this is how you can use data um, and write a sinusoidal function that can model that data over an extended period of time. We could use this uh, to predict the weather for several months in advance um, or see what we thought the weather was several months uh, behind. Uh, so it's very interesting and you can use this on all sorts of data. If you guys would like to see something else like tides or daylight hours, just let me know and I'll post another video on this. Thank you guys so much for watching and catch you next time.